air temperature measurements and furnace temperature measurements like this we have different set of thermometers available now first radiation thermometer now in this radiation thermometer infrared thermometers with corrective measures are incorporated in the instrument yesterday what we discussed like basically whenever a person or any heated body emits electromagnetic radiation within the range of some 0 to 700 degree centigrade it is going to lie in the infrared range from 0 to 700 usually the infrared range is used and for other temperatures in some cases visible range is also used which also emits the radiation in the band of 300 to 700 nanometers so the infrared 700 to 1000 nanometer range a set of thermometers are available now these all infrared ones lie in this radiation thermometer now whenever we are using these radiation thermometers some factors like what i said yesterday the ambient temperature the other bodies which are in the vicinity of the temperature under test or under measurement they also emit and they clash with the actual temperature so for all such things the compensation network is a must once the temperature is sensed depending upon the surrounding or the ambience how much correction has to be applied to the measured temperature and also we discussed yesterday because these thermometers have mirrors lenses and some other lossy materials they are going to absorb some electromagnetic radiations which are emitted from the hot body so for all these when you apply the correction that correction has to be incorporated in the instrument the instruments basically we are in the sophisticated instrument era so the instruments are usually few 6 to 7 inches actually most of them some of them are even smaller few centimeters also so within the 6 to 7 inches you have to incorporate all the compensation network plus the processing network plus the sensor from sensor it goes to the detector the detected ones go to the processor uh, processor is basically a electronic circuitry again that has to be maintained at proper temperature otherwise with the increase in the temperature naturally in the uh, electronic circuitry we make use of either silicon rarely germanium so silicon when you use it has to be enclosed in a chamber or it should be isolated from thermal heating so all these have to be incorporated in the small instrument which we use so infrared thermometers with corrective measures incorporated they are incorporated in the instrument so all these come un- under the circuitry which is needed for the basic measurement of the temperature okay first what we have a sensor from the sensor it is given to the processing unit this processing unit is basically a electronic circuitry it can be a chip it can be a microprocessor it can be a microcontroller any of this depending upon the requirement these processors again what i mean by requirement is the cost how much you can afford and the application where it is used that is what is the tolerance which is required there or rather you can tolerate how much variation is tolerated suppose simple example i'll give you a thermometer thermometer with what tolerance you want if 1 degree of variation is okay then assume that a human being is suffering from say 102 degrees temperature if 1 degree tolerance for every 100 degree centigrade is there 1 percent tolerance then instead of showing 102 it may show 103 degrees or 101 degrees both are not good so under such cases the error level or the precision requirement is very very high though it is a simple thermometer used for and hardly you pay not more than 100 rupees for a thermometer so that also should incorporate higher precision level so depending upon this your cost of the manufacturing varies also the sensor which is being used varies often we have discussed mercury thermometer and alcohol thermometer 
plus the digital thermometers these days which give a beep they are also very small in size but they are basically physical contact type so they make use of again the same processing network so depending upon the requirement the corrective measure like if the ambience is giving temperature how exactly the insulation should be provided in the electronic circuitry so that the temperature of the electronic circuitry is not varied because all of us know for every 10 degree rise the current doubles naturally when the current doubles it is a chain reaction current doubles and then it automatically heats the circuit it heats the circuit again the current doubles so it's a chain reaction so heat sinks or the coolants should be provided or thermal isolation should be provided in all the thermometers which we are going to study now so these are all should be included or incorporated in the instrument which is manufactured now for accuracy calibration against the black body is essential and on the spot calibration is done by providing a simple black and cavity now already we know what is black body radiation why the black body is taken as the reference so this we have discussed earlier so every thermometer which always gives you a comparison the actual temperature measured by electromagnetic radiation is compared with a reference that is always a black body reference now with that it is measured and the comparative network is going to give you the actual temperature with respect to that black body what is the temperature so it is a relative measurement so here so with every instrument you have to have this next the lenses mirrors absorb radiation energy hence pose problems for accuracy in measurement this also has to be taken care now to do this the absorbed energy how much is the absorbed energy level so usually what is done is higher end instruments the absorption by these is minimum if they are lower end in the compensation network the compensation for these many absorbed energy how much is going to be the degree level to be added to the measured temperature that is the correction which is done in the processing network so usually such processing is done in all these instruments so how much is actually generated then without that absorption how much you get then with the absorption how much should be added so this is done in all these instruments lens material have this different transmission characteristics yeah this is a very important one now we use the lenses now all of us know that lenses they don't transmit all the wavelengths equally some of them are refracted some of them are absorbed some of them are transmitted so depending upon which particular lens or you should have multiple lens lens correction there so that under test or under interest what which wavelength you need to transmit that should be only passed through that and other wavelengths should be kept constant or not transmitted so you have to have again the correction required for different wavelength measurements using the lenses now for this there are different measures which are taken either a band of wavelengths is passed and the under test one only is transmitted or else a band and the average is taken and then the correction is applied so there are different varieties actually so depending upon again the requirement and the cost you can afford you have different techniques used all of them are passed or only one is passed and the others are obstructed so whichever under requirement or under test is there only that wavelength is considered different glass material are are used to overcome the above issue for different ranges of wavelength yeah now what exactly the this sentence means is now lenses are made up of glasses and rarely fiber so glass you know which quality glass absorbs which wavelength more so depending upon which wavelength it absorbs less 
for that band this particular lens is fixed similarly the next glass with particular refractive index and which wavelength it transmits without any absorption or minimum absorption is transmitted so like this different combinations of glasses and depending upon this again you require a intelligent circuitry there where which one should be selected which wavelength is to be selected that should be taken care of that again has to be incorporated in the instrument itself so such selecting network is also used with selecting lenses so you have a variety to choose which glass or the which lens you need to pass a particular wavelength that circuitry and again the compensation network for each one may be provided so all these measures increase the cost of your thermometer now presence of co2 o2 and moisture are overcome by sensing temperature wavelengths of temperatures of wavelength bands okay one more point now we already know we have studied in electrical transducers like different these gases naturally absorb more energy which is emitted from the electromagnetic radiation if co2 level here in this room is more naturally my temperature may be may not be actual one it may be the co2 absorbs more energy so the energy transmitted to the lens or to the thermometer may be less so under such cases instead of taking only one wavelength transmitted a band of wavelengths is taken and then the averaging or normalizing is done then normalized one is sensed by the sensor or the thermometer and then whatever again compensation depending upon this calculation when the band is transmitted when the single wavelength is transmitted on that the correction is applied there the necessary correction and then the actual temperature is displayed so an error correction technique is required for all these so by holding all variables constant except the wavelength of interest this is the most commonly applied one in all these cases only the wavelength which is assuming that okay the temperature lies within 97 to 98 under such cases which wavelength is being transmitted how much energy is being transmitted that is checked and automatically if it is lying within that range only that band of wavelength is transmitted the remaining bands are stopped so by doing that you can minimize the error or the error correction factor or the error correction circuitry also will be less burdened so these are the few majors and how it is done in almost all the infrared thermometer now the next one is pyrometer now pyrometer is basically a broad band thermometer it includes ir and visible band now visible band means its range is broader compared to the ir thermometer the range is broader ir thermometers were ranging from only 700 to 1000 but here the band is from 300 to 1000 so naturally when you are varying the band of wavelength naturally the temperature variation also is so you can go ahead with larger range of temperature measurements now they are available in various descriptions and design now these descriptions and design basically all of them are dependent on your affordability and the application where it is used and the tolerance level what is okay with you if 1 degree variation is okay with that tolerance band they come if 10 degrees is okay suppose in some furnaces and all even the 10 degree variation in some cases it is okay even in some machinery or failure testing and all okay 5 degrees 10 degrees variations is okay so depending upon the requirement here you are, they are available in various description and design means size if it is stationary how much what should be the size if it is mobile what should be the size if it has to be carried in the pocket what should be the size so depending upon that it is available in various design and naturally various different pricing also so make use of 
infrared and visible lights use nano sensors they make use of basically nano sensors and deals with stationary objects so basically they are fixed in one place and the person goes there or the machinery is also moving but the pyrometer is fixed and then it here actually even the movable ones are also available with again the corrective measures taken but most of them we began with actually pyrometers which are stable but not stationary but now movable ones are also very popularly available so all of them make use of nano sensors now we had big transducers then we shifted to micro sensor now it is nano sensor nano sensors are actually very very small in size millimeter size sensors are available see now in our mobile we have almost all these most of the nano sensors available any mobile you take minimum around 14 to 15 sensors which are most widely used even the gyroscope which is of few centimeter or inches in size in mobiles it is available in millimeter length so you have these nano sensors only being used in all the compact or nano instrumentation or sophisticated instrumentation so errors are less as black body references provided continuously so this is one thing always in thermometer all of you remember that always black body reference is a must because the temperature absorbed by that black body is taken as a reference see if you all remember in our all electronic circuitry a comparator network is used now op amp comparators are most commonly used because they are stable and the gain is constant and stability basically because of stability in all these factors current stability voltage stability amplification stability all the stability factors so how we use the comparator to switch on the next circuitry or transistor or give comparative voltages only similarly here always a comparison is done with the black body reference and a compared temperature is only displayed on the display so if it is provided there itself then the errors can be reduced output signals are processed continuously by electronic circuitry and compensation circuitry takes care of error limits now error limits so you have different types of error limiting circuits like the feedback ones are there or the compensation networks with positive feedback negative feedback all those circuitry is already you have studied in your thermocouples and all so those are used here if you all remember how we have done in thermocouples and thermal resistance thermometer so the basic compensation network using a dc potentiometer it gives you an idea whether positive should be given or negative should be given under which band of wavelength so such networks are always used in the instrument so compensation for errors emanating from gases vapors smoke dust and flake formation on the object etc are taken care of now here what happens when you are making use of lenses naturally lens tends to get smoky or it can catch dust so when it has caught dust if it is not clean then what happens whatever energy emitted from the hot body may not be absorbed properly or sensing may not happen properly so the continuous maintenance or cleaning of the dust on the lens has to be taken care if it is not done then again the correction circuitry comes into picture now gases naturally gases also sometimes they are smoky so they deposit the thin film so naturally the absorption will be again less so instead of displaying the actual temperature the temperature which is displayed may be much much lesser flake formation all these are very much possible in all these instruments so either they have to be maintained properly naturally we know sometimes maintenance is not possible at regular intervals or even if you do it at regular intervals the usage may be more so more number of times the maintenance is required so under such cases the compensation network depending upon again the environment and all these points if they are taken care of regularly then 
the role of compensation network may be reduced so all ir instruments make use of lenses filters mirrors hence regular adjustments now again adjustment why all of us know that focal lens whenever the lens is used the focal length should be properly maintained it is nothing but the distance between the center and the uh, lens point lens center or the curvature so it depends upon many of these factors so when the lens is not getting proper radiation then naturally the transmission will not be correct if the distance by continuous usage by any chance if it is moved even few millimeters also then there will be error in focusing that energy on the center this happens even with our focal lens also the common lenses those who are using lenses they will know this better if your number is changed means what actually you are unable to see it so the focal lens even a millimeter difference also causes lot of disturbance similarly in this case also a millimeter or centimeter variation in the lens position causes lot of errors in the temperature measurement so whatever temperature you measure may be erroneous so they have to be properly cleaned and maintained adjustment with the distance has to be done regularly so for about 700 degree centigrade disappearing filament there is one type disappearing filament type and minus 50 to 100 degree centigrade thermopiles are used thermopiles already we have studied in thermocouples where the piling of your crystal uh, thermometers then 0 to 1500 degree centigrade pyroelectric type are used then minus then 400 to 4000 degree centigrade silicon sensors are used so this gives you an idea for different ranges of temperature the same metal same semiconductor or same filament cannot be used because when you use a semiconductor you have to bother how much variation it is happening due to increased temperature any th- semiconductor sensor again compensation has to be provided if you are using metal or filament or simple resistance type then you should know what is the boiling what is the melting point of that filament whether it can withstand higher temperatures and so all these things i think we have studied in your thermocouples and the first part of your electric passive electric and active electric transistors so here each one shows that all, uh, the temperature cannot be measured by a single element a sensor depending upon the range you have to go ahead with a different sensor made up of different material so this is regarding your radiation pyrometer now the next comes thermography now what is this thermography now satellite images are taken you know the satellites give us the weather conditions how do they give from top they monitor the earth temperatures they observe the earth temperature then even the rain all these weather based in general the weather forecast is done on every minute minute basis now how exactly this is done this takes help of your thermography thermography is basically taking image using a camera thermal image using a camera now thermal image means it gives you various points under requirement suppose i want to see belgaum airport what is the temperature okay now another hilly side what is the temperature so such points extreme high points extreme low points in the city contours or boundaries some uh, like idea um, where exactly the variations are very high or low there the temperature is measured and some other point where slightly it is stable such various points are taken and the image of this is taken by the ir camera such camera gives you a thermal image of the particular area under interest or it can be machinery also it can be vehicle also or it can be a simple earth or even a mountain also so it gives a thermal image and this thermal image now the various points are tested so these points are given to a detector and detectors of various types are available these detectors give you the 
temperature at these points and using them another set of like infrared thermography is so these thermometers are also developed on the basis of now based on radiation thermometry often called thermal imaging the sis based thermography is based so using ir camera thermal images taken which enables the identification of points or regions of high or low temperature points depending upon how many points you want to test in a particular region those many detectors have to be placed so if you want more number of points then more number of detectors are required so array of detectors which are made up of what pandium oxide pixels on silicon substrate scan the image and given to the processing circuitry now this image once it is taken it is given to what i said array of detectors these detectors are made up of this particular vanadium oxide and they are in the form of pixel small in size again our nanotechnology manufactures these pixels now these pixels are fixed in a array and these pixels they sense the temperature and depending upon the temperature it develops a voltage level and that voltage is given to a processing network or processing circuitry now it cannot be hanged so all these detectors in are fixed on a substrate silicon substrate now care should be taken to protect this substrate make it thermal isolated plus the pixels or the detectors have to be again thermally isolated from the environment only the temperature which they receive should be from the thermal image taken by the ir camera not other temperatures again the ambient temperature plus the objects around them should not affect this temperature only then whatever readings you are taking will be correct otherwise they will be erroneous so the pixels are thermally insulated from the substrate this care has to be taken and even in this cases not only vanadium oxide photon detectors are also used how much energy is falling and on that basis the photon detectors are also used so used in where exactly these are used the application of them they are used in reactors buildings machinery vehicles in motion to prevent failures fire and disasters so basically they are used in reactors now reactors means very very sensitive ones there any minute temperature differences may cause havoc there so they have to be very very precise so basically they are on the higher side not commonly used in our thermometer or the instruments pocket instruments which we carry so they are basically used in big reactors buildings and their accuracy level required is very very high and this alone is not used actually in reactors they are used in collaboration with another system where that is also monitoring the temperature so thermo piles and all such ones where at higher temperatures are used they are also used in medical diagnosis where exactly the circulatory disorders inflammation in the body etc so circulatory disorders they are used it see and in missile guidance satellite altitude sensing etc they are used so basically on the higher end side where the missile satellite all the ambient temperature has to be taken so uh, basically the satellite temperature what we get or the satellite weather forecast what we get is based on thermography so all such higher end applications need this kind of a thing because even simple ir radiation it is not possible to get the temperature sitting in the or the satellite cannot get this so the satellite images basically make use of this thermography technique next we have thermal flow meter the earlier in our uh, third unit that is electrical transducers we have studied good number of flow meter now if you all remember we had the hot wire type 
or thin filament type and in that again we had two bifurcation constant current method and constant temperature method now in the constant method uh, current method i'll just try to give you the link where we were passing a constant current through the filament so that the temperature of the fluid was maintained same it was not going to increase due to the increase in the temperature in the filament so we were maintaining a constant current flow through the filament and later on any variation in the liquid level was measured as proportional to this and associated with that we had another method where it was constant temperature method by varying the current through the filament we were maintaining the temperature of the filament constant but the liquid level or flow was changing so by maintaining the level we were adjusting the current by varying the current to maintain the temperature of the filament constant we were noting down what is the change happening in the liquid level due to that how the current variation is happening right this we have studied both the methods in detail so i hope all of you remember that otherwise go back and get one link there so basically we have constant current and constant so both these methods are basically used to no either variation in the current to produce the particular change in the temperature or keeping the current same variation in the temperature was monitored and that was given so these two were major used in the measurement of flow now here also making use of the same method but only thing it is a slightly higher end or precise version of what we study so where exactly these are used in industrial processes mass and energy balances are required now industrial processes there are n number of industries so wherever the fluids are involved they can be gases or liquids so whenever the fluids are involved they are naturally flowing and the flow rate and the mass so this we have discussed in mechanical transducers how flow and mass we have to major and different three four types of flow meters and mass flow meter we have discussed today so common gas flow meters and liquid flow meters work on the principle of hot wire and hot film anemometry a constant current and constant temperature types are most widely used sensor can be heated by a thermistor thin film resistance thermometer or thermocouple now see here each one we have studied in detail so thermocouples we have studied how exactly they are used in each case and resistance thermometer along with the dc potentiometer balancing we have studied so how the balance of the dc potentiometer is varied and accordingly the current variation or voltage variation is noted down and that in proportional to the temperature variation we have always done this and even the indicating instrument using this variation in the temperature or variation in the current or variation in the voltage caused by variation in the temperature we have studied all this in potentiometer dc potentiometer so the thermocouple the different effects and how exactly the thermocouples of higher like from few hundred meters also thermocouples are available to measure the furnace temperature even a small thermocouple which is few centimeters in length is also available to measure the temperature and we have seen different types j type k type and what exactly they are made up of the iron constant in or copper copper and iron thermocouples on these we have studied so depending upon the range you require whether it is see the iron constant in around 1000 to 1200 degree centigrade these j and k type they cover so around 1200 is fine here but if you want higher ones higher temperature measurements what exactly to be made so basically flow meter you are measuring the flow of a fluid it can be gas or it can be a liquid or even a molten metal also which is the fluid form so such ones when you are measuring naturally your thermocouple which you are using 
needs to be made up of a particular element or whose temperatures are going to whose melting points are going to be much much higher than the flow uh, the gases or fluids so taking care of that you have several varieties available so the thermocouples now the resistance thermometers what type of resistance thermometers we have used we have done the potentiometer type dc potentiometer in association with the simple tungsten filament or any filament type we have used so they make use of up to around 1800 degree centigrade now thin films thin films again in this we have the foil type which was either a continuous foil or a wired foil or a fixed foil so these foil types are also available in thin film they can be up to 800 degree centigrade or so they can be used now thermistors thermistors all of us know they are having negative temperature coefficient that means with the increase in the temperature the characteristics or the voltage developed down so you have different types there so any one of them depending upon which range of temperature you are trying to measure for the flow of the liquid or the gas or the <coughs> sorry so for any of these fluids whether liquid or gas depending upon which particular metal and whose temperature the melting point is higher can be utilized here so sensor can be depending upon that you can have either simple heated wire type or these any of this one can be used now sensing of temperatures of flowing fluid with any one of the above by inserting it into the fluid is done so this we have done actually in some cases direct insertion will not work because if it is very very high and human beings around that cannot be safe under such cases what is done is indirect methods are also possible now what are the indirect methods the jacket method where the insertion is done and then the radiated or convection heat all those things are considered and then the radiated heat is measured outside this thermocouple or the foil type or the resistance thermometer along with one more that radiation type both are together used for measurement of higher temperature and then in turn the flow of flow rate of the fluids some cases unheated sensor is also used as reference now unheated sensor in all the cases is not possible in some cases why the comparison in all our radiation thermometry we were using black body reference but here another reference not necessarily black body a temperature which is say room temperature or some fixed temperature with same make is used same element should be there and the same your temperature variations or the resistance variation same filament is used so that all your other physical and the temperature or heat parameters remaining same one is maintained at room temperature the other one is allowed to change or whatever the flow meter in which the fluid is flowing in which the thermometer is placed now the comparison of these two temperatures is done one is fixed the other one is varied so this simple comparison gives you the temperature variation of the fluid and using that the regular method of flow meter where slightly irregular depending upon the flow rate we know already what corrections we have applied in the uh, electrical thermo electrical transducer so similar corrections here also they have to be applied so these sensors give you a delta t change and this delta t change with some correction can be used for measuring the flow meter of the fluid flow rate of the fluid so basically in thermal flow meters what you use is one thermal sensor of any of this type depending upon what is the range of temperature of that fluid you are measuring then using that 
it is get it is converted to or calibrated in terms of the rate of the fluid which we have done earlier in last four cases we have done this so how exactly the flow meter is used using the temperature variation for flow rate calculation so this is regarding the thermal flow rate now next comes is nano instrumentation so all this time what we studied is basically the temperature measurement at various levels using different techniques plus your sophistication in the instrument how it is brought using these technologies micro sense now comes the nano instrumentation now micro the lower level of that is simple words it is nano now nano instrumentation all of us actually we have seen the way our watch size or the smart watches are coming into picture all this is because of the nano instrumentation technology or some of the medical applications are also very very good with nano instrumentation as i discussed earlier the nano strips which are used they measure your heart rate or bp sugar levels everything basically a human body needs especially the patient every time they need either a doctor or a trained nurses help but here they can check it on their own and if there is any variation any sudden change if they experience along with their feeling also they can go to doctor immediately so such medical instruments are coming up with the help of this nano instrumentation not only here even robotics all the artificial in intelligence technologies they are again leading to robotics everywhere now the robots are coming into picture now all household applications or industrial applications all of us know plus any vehicle also nowadays you are going to get what already you have got the driverless vehicles so such vehicles they are making use of all this nano instrumentation technology so the supporting factors are artificial intelligence or the uh, nano instrumentation or nano technology only plus the electronic processing that is also happening at a very very fast rate the image processing take for example the image processing or any other large data processing is happening at a faster rate these all things are leading us to this nano instrumentation and effectively we are using them so you can just have a look the activities pertaining to the production of micro sensors and other miniature electronic and mechanical devices constitute the term nano instrumentation nano technology basically relies heavily on the effective measurements of the surface properties of components during and after production by means of highly sophisticated instrumentation this highly sophisticated instrumentation includes all our nano sensors plus the nano technology plus the processing so all those combined together it leads to highly sophisticated instrumentation the measurements provide properties such as topographic features shapes edges sharpness effects movements of atoms etc so all these things are studied carefully and then they are incorporated basically the properties of every element is studied carefully and in the properties are utilized and incorporated in this nano technology so what exactly the instruments robotics and artificial intelligence how they are helping this we'll study in the next